Hello everyone, welcome back to Paul's Messy Bench Models, and today I've got an update on the big rig group build. I'm building the Mac R685ST, 125th scale from AMT, and I'm making mine into a garbage truck. My general impressions of this kit uh, so far is that, well, it's a typical vintage AMT truck kit. Um, there's a lot of flash on the parts, um, nothing really fits very precisely, um, some things are misaligned, um, you're going to do a lot of sanding and filing and shaving and, um, you're going to wind up with a snow drift of white plastic chunks as you work, but if you know that going in ahead of time, uh, you, it's still a fun kit, I'm having fun. I keep telling myself I'm having fun. The cab and the hood are nicely molded. Uh, the cab has nice firewall and there's a, kind of an internal bucket to get the inner door detail. This uh, curved portion on the bottom of the cab is actually a separate piece and they would have you add that pretty late in the instructions, but uh, I test fit it in there and I found I could get this inner tub in and out without too much difficulty. So I went ahead and glued it in place now so that I could uh, clean up the seams. For clear parts, the uh, cab windows are all one piece with uh, clear headlights. And you also get red and amber lights of all kinds of sizes and shapes, more than you'll actually need, so that is handy. The chrome tree is uh, pretty small, just the stuff that would actually be shiny. No silly chrome wheels, no silly chrome engine parts. Nice. You get a nice decal sheet, lots of uh, information stickers, license plates, registration numbers, and uh, I don't know if it's photographing well, but sort of a dark brownish maroon stripes for the barred trucking scheme. The kit comes with either these rectangular or the cylindrical fuel tanks. Um, the rectangular ones have this nice tread plate pattern in them, and I really wanted to use them but I can't figure out a way to clean up the seams without destroying the te tread plate texture. So unless I come up with something, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the uh, cylinder ones, which is too bad because these kind of look cool. Oh well. So the kit has the option of either a vertical exhaust or an under the frame exhaust. The tires that come with the kit they look pretty good. They've got some nice sidewall detail. They've got some nice deep tread on them. Um, one thing I noticed as I was mocking things up, though, is that they are pretty narrow. They're about the same width as the wheels. Um, also, the opening in the tires is too big for the wheels. It's a very loose, sloppy fit. Um, I'm going to have to find some different tires to put on my truck. If I put uh, 10 of these on my big rig, I'm going to have one floppy jalopy. The wheels in the kit are uh, nicely detailed, and uh, thankfully, they're not chromed. The engine has pretty good detail. Uh, the engine, transmission, and uh, rear differentials are all molded with a... Uh, a rough cast metal texture, but uh, on the edges or the sides that were vertical in the mold, those are smooth so that it'll slide out of the mold. Um, so the way I reproduce the uh, cast texture on those surfaces, got a piece of aluminum foil and I mixed about 50-50 the surface primer and the putty and I just made a very kind of goopy paint. And in small areas at a time, I would just apply it and then just agitate it with a stiff brush to get a uh, kind of a rough sandy texture to it. 
As you're building the engine and other things, uh, it's really important to mock things up and test fit stuff as you go. Um, sometimes you'll find that the locating pins they've provided actually make the fit worse than if you would just cut them off and kind of eyeball things on your own. So as you're building your chassis, um, there's a point in the instructions where it shows locating the fuel filter behind the spring mount and behind the cab mount. And later in the instructions, it shows it installed up here. Um, I'm not sure which location is actually correct, but so once your engine is installed, the exhaust pipe has to thread down through that gap to hook up here. So if your fuel filter is here, it could cause interference. If your full fuel filter is back here, it's going to be right above the exhaust pipe. So keep this in mind that if you do put it up here, make sure it's farther enough forward that you have clearance for the pipe. Uh, pays your money, you take your choice. So when you're building your front suspension, these front brake cylinders, um, the pins on the back of the brake mount aren't long enough. And uh, this brake cylinder is going to rub against the tire if you uh, just leave things the way they are. Uh, what I did was I, uh, I cut this pin off and I glued a long piece of uh, styrene rod in this groove. And then I drilled a hole through the brake mount all the way through. And that way, I can slide it back and forth to get it right where I want it. There are several places in the instructions where uh, AMT just gives you a range of part numbers to use to put something together. Um, the rear suspension is a good example of this. But... Uh, you know, for here, example here, they say use 181 to 184. Um, that, do, that does not mean that each one of those pieces is identical and interchangeable. They're not. You have to pay attention to the illustrations. And, you know, half the parts aren't actually illustrated. On the chassis assembly, when you're building this trunnion shaft, watch out for that notch. That notch has to go on the left side. Because when you go to the step to assemble your suspension on the left spring assembly, which isn't illustrated, the inside surface is going to have a tab that engages in that notch. The inner surface of the right hand assembly has got kind of a half moon shaped depression to engage the trunnion shaft. Um, the outer surface of both sides this circle is smooth. Uh, the right-hand side, you're going to have a tab on each end because the rear axle and the front axle both have a notch on that side. Uh, the left-hand assembly um, is only going to have a tab on the back. The rear axle has a notch on both ends. The front axle has a notch only on the right-hand side. So if you keep all that straight, it will go together without being too wobbly. If you mess something up, well, you have my sympathy. To make mine into a garbage truck, I had to stretch the frame. So I took, a, I cut the frame right here in the middle approximately and used strips of uh, styrene to uh, extend the, the frame. Um, Luckily, the way the body is built, I could kind of stretch the frame on the undersurface of the body, and that has kept everything flat and straight. So, here's my progress on building the, uh, the garbage truck body. It's uh, basically just built up out of sheet and strip styrene. Um, there is a website that has all kinds of resources for... Uh, getting pictures and drawings and technical specifications for garbage trucks. It's called uh, Classic Refuse Trucks. And uh, they've got all kinds of neat stuff. Well, I guess what constitutes neat stuff depends on uh, how much of a nerd you are. But anyway, making progress with that.
This is going to be a Leech Packmaster 2R, if all goes well. Well, this is my progress so far. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll keep you posted with updates. See you later. Bye.